My name is Michelle Manje. I'm a pediatric neuro-oncologist at Stanford University and a basic neuroscience researcher. So DIPG very, very closely resembles a normal glial precursor cell mm -hmm. called an oligodendrocyte precursor cell. And that cell type is the only cell type, um, the only glial cell type, that actually forms synapses with neurons. We've known this for the last 20 years, although you know the field is still trying very hard to understand what it is these neuron to glial synapses do in the healthy brain. When we thought that perhaps DIPG cells and other high-grade glioma cells might be similarly forming synapses with neurons. Um, that really would mean that the, that the tumor cells are, are integrating into the neural circuitry and that brain activity could be um, providing really crucial electrochemical signals to the cancer cells. Now during brain development, these same kind of electrochemical um, signals you know, changes in the in the voltage um, of the membrane actually of the cells helps to promote normal neural stem cell development and and really contributes importantly to brain development and growth. Um, it would make sense for a glial malignancy of childhood to be hijacking these crucial mechanisms in uh, normal brain development for their own purpose. And so we we wondered whether. Um, Similarly, synapses might be forming between neurons and glioma cells, neuron-glioma synapses. And we had a little bit of an uh, early clue that this could be happening because a, a crucial growth factor that we had identified was upregulating the expression of a number of different synapse-related genes in DIPG cells and other high-grade glioma cells. And so we took a, a, a basic neuroscience approach to try to understand whether you know, electro, electrical synapses were actually forming between neurons and the glioma cells invading um, those circuits. And what we found was that indeed, you know, gliomas like DIPG and other high-grade gliomas like glioblastoma are synaptically integrating into the normal neural circuitry. And, and so they're really, they're kind of, if, if you want to think about this as, as a, um, you know, kind of a, a cyber criminal. This is this is a cell type that is actually hacking into the neural infrastructure and and deriving critical growth signals through this synaptic integration. So, you know, the first the first problem is to understand how and why it's happening, and the second you know problem is to is to interrupt it. So we found that these synapses were forming between neurons and glioma cells, and that the synaptic signaling was driving DIPG growth. Um, there's a particular kind of neurotransmitter receptor we found to be present in this um, neuron to glial synapses that, that are present between neurons and DIPG cells. And using a, um, actually an anti-epileptic drug that uh, targets this kind of neurotransmitter receptor, we found that that slowed DIPG growth. And so as we, as we further study this and understand more of the molecular details, I think it's going to show us a, a, you know, a group of therapeutic targets that we hadn't appreciated um, that are you know, really neurophysiological in nature. And it may be that we can repurpose medicines that are normally meant for seizures, normally meant for migraine, or normally meant to, to treat cardiac um, arrhythmias and, and instead use them to help us to slow the growth of DIPG and other gliomas. As a clinician, understanding this integration of glial malignancies into neural circuits really helps to explain a couple of characteristics of the tumor that we knew to be true clinically but perhaps didn't understand. And one of the important um, characteristics of glial malignancies is that they, they grow in the central nervous system. Now, other cancers spread throughout the body, um, and, and brain tumors, in, in particular gliomas, really only ever grow in the central nervous system, despite the fact that the tumor cells we now know enter the bloodstream. They simply can't grow anywhere else. And this really helps to explain, uh, for me, why that might be true. This microenvironmental interaction between the glioma cells and the, the central nervous system um, uh, microenvironment is really critical and, and fundamental to glioma progression. Brain tumors only spread within the brain and it's because of this unique microenvironment of the nervous system. The Cure Starts Now has supported my research program since 
the first day that I opened my lab. Um, it's been enormously important in helping us to, you know, develop new tools in order to um, ask high risk, high reward questions, and, and really to, to get the program launched. Um, and, and this study in particular started um, when I won a, a SNAP grant. You know, I sort of proposed this crazy idea. I said, I think that maybe DIPG is forming synapses with neurons and, and that matters. And I pitched it in one of these four minute sessions and walked away with a check to start the work. And you know, that's resulted in, in a great deal of additional funding as we, as we gleaned you know, more, about the, uh, more about this really fun fundamental question as we started to generate, you know, compelling data, but I, you know, would not have been able to get started without that funding.